Hey everyone, welcome back to the Guitar Slinger Hockey Channel. Got another cool video for you today. Uh, in fact, it's another collaboration video with Justin, aka Boomer, from the Beer League Bum Hockey Reviews Channel. So in this video, what we're going to do is a little bit of a stick mashup where Justin's going to have me try out all of his sticks from a bunch of different manufacturers, uh, including my own sticks, and kind of rank them from what I think is my favorite stick all the way down to my least favorite stick. So this is obviously going to be pretty subjective, but for those of you watching it, um, it might be give you some ideas on what you should go out and try. Um, and to that point, everybody kind of shoots a little bit differently, so I wanted to tell you um, how I shoot, and so that might help kind of as you're watching me, because I'm going to be the guinea pig for this, <laughs> this experiment here. So um, I am a pass-first kind of player, so uh, passing is really important to me, having a stick that can pass hard and flat. Um, so that means I need to really be able to feel the kick point, I need to feel the, the shaft bending. I'm flexing as I pass. Um, I also am a power shooter, so especially with wrist shots. Um, and so I need a stick that can uh, really uh, rifle them in from the top of the circle or the blue line. Um, I'm not so much a quick release player. Um, I'm not so much a big slap shot guy. I do have a one timer that I like to un unleash occasionally. Um, and so those are some of the kinds of things that are important to me, whereas Justin differs in that. He's definitely a, you know, big slap shot, quick release, um, things like that, snapshots. And uh, that said, um, even though we have a different shot, um, we definitely have a opinion on what the best stick brand is in comparison to maybe some of the not so great ones. So hopefully that will uh, give you a little bit of some insight as you're watching me run through these sticks. Um, the other thing I want to do is a note that's completely unrelated to that. I want to give a big shout out and a thanks to a fan by the name of Johan Nelson. And excuse me if I'm uh, pronouncing that wrong, Johan. Um, but Johan was kind enough to uh, make the new logo that you see for Guitar Slinger Hockey Channel. So definitely really appreciate that. And uh, thank you and for your support on that. And I thank all the rest of you for uh, your continued support. It's been really fun chatting with all of you and kind of getting to know you through the comment section and stuff like that. And so um, with that said, let's get into the video. Oh, yeah, I guess there is one more order of business uh, that we should take care of before getting into the meat and potatoes of the video. Um, and this wouldn't truly be a stick video without Justin breaking something. So, without further ado. Okay, so before we get into this, uh, a little bit of explanation is required. So, when I went up north to film with Justin... Uh, I brought up not only my own sticks, but I also brought up my wife's sticks, too, without asking her. So what Justin has right now is my wife's CCM SuperTax AS4 Pro in a 70 Flex uh, with a P90TM curb on it. Furthermore, it's definitely her favorite stick of all time. And, well, I'll let you guys use your imagination how this worked out for me when I got home. <laughs> Fortunately, my wife is really cool, and it only cost me a box of Timmy's. Okay, let's see. It'll be more of a dark stuff. All right, so when we're talking about the stick rollers, the only two that aren't in this video yet, and look for my reviews on those two sticks, are the Sherwood Wrecker Legend Pro and the LX2 Pro. Both of these, unfortunately, because of when this was filmed, are not in this video or the stick tier list. I just thought I'd warn you really early in the video. All right, guys, so I've been with Chris from Guitar Slinger Hockey today. We have a ton of sticks, and we wanted to do a quick stick tier list and kind of throw in the pro stocks with those because a lot of people ask me about the pro stock hockey sticks and how they compare so i always settle on big high-end retails and the pro stock generally is okay for the average beer leaguer like us but just for fun i want chris to run through and what we're going to do is he's going to shoot with them he's going to start with the pro stock and we're going to put them one and two and then he's going to move them around as he sees fits as he goes through each stick so i think it'll be fun so let's rock it 
So just to reiterate what I said on the ice, both me and Chris wanted to see how Chris felt about the pro stock, the best pro stock, which is the red line 375 grams in mid kick and low kick in relation to performance uh, with the other sticks that we had, you know, hyper light and all that type of stuff. It's important to understand that these are not kind of individual stick reviews as me and Chris kind of hold a kind of different opinions when it comes to individual sticks per se, but we're on a pretty level playing field when it comes to who the winner and losers are, which is also in this video. So with Chris not actually trying pro stocks before, it was all about putting those against all these sticks that we had to see how he felt, you know, a stick that was basically under $200 performs in relation to the top sticks on the market today. All right, so here we go trying the, uh, this lovely mustard stick with a, some sort of curve. Oh, it hit a corner, how about that? You know what? I don't know if it's the curve or the stick, but this was a very accurate stick. Power-wise, not like not crazy, but surprisingly accurate. So, uh, pleasantly surprised. Okay, let's take a couple slaps. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay so um a little all over the place for i i don't have I'm, I'm admittedly not much of a slap shot guy but it's got the power in there for sure it has it buried within so okay. Well, I, I, I think it's also winning and losing at the same time right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I did want to add something about that stick, uh, trying it out. Uh, long after we wrapped the filming and all that good stuff, um, I found myself thinking a lot about that particular stick. And um, it grew on me a lot. Like, it is a stick that I would pay money for, for sure, even with all the choices that we have out there. Um, I don't want to spoil anything down the the in the rest of the video, but I'll just make that mention now that it, that definitely uh, left an impression upon me. So back to it. So let's start with who's losing stick wars. When you have all these beautiful stick brands and you can't see them all perfectly on camera, but at the end of the day, those who release top end sticks that are budget sticks are the losers of stick wars because there is a company we'll touch on in a second, that outperforms them all. So who are we talking about? We've got the Twigs, we've got the Hofas, we've got the Verbiros, we've got the Swift. I have tested the Swift. I have a video on my YouTube channel, check it out. All those are budget hockey stick companies that say they make top end sticks. And usually by top end, what they mean is a sub 375 gram stick or so that they are going with lightness. Generally speaking, when you have a light stick that is more cheaply made, you cannot engineer it. You do not have R&D. So therefore, the Swift, the, the Vibiro, the Hopas, those types of sticks, they do not have the shot power, they do not have the recoil, and they do not have the release of some of the top end sticks. Now, do they not have value? No, of course not. They do. The value comes in their cost and their weight. However, when you're comparing the top end sticks and you see all their ads about how they compete with the best, really not true. So those types of stick companies like Swift, you need to know what you're getting into, which is a budget stick that weighs really well, you know, 375, but is not going to compete with the top ends in terms of release and shot power. So losers of those, of course, are the budget twigs. Okay. 
Um, kick point for those felt a little off to me, felt a little, a little bit of a struggle, but I felt like I got a hold of a couple of those, so. Yeah, that one works. Okay, so it definitely has the most power for slap shots. I didn't like it at all for the other shot, so. So is it better? Are you ranking it higher than the pro right now? I'm gonna rank the pro higher because of accuracy. Uh, and I feel like I can do a little bit more with the pro. Okay, I do not have one here and their other stick the Covert QR5 Pro is the most boring stick I have ever tested. And I unfortunately don't have an LX Pro right now, but the reason that Sherwood is a winner is for one stick only. Has nothing to do with the QR5 Pro, that thing is dog shit. And then when you go and you look at the actual other stick they have, which I don't think is gonna last, which is the Novium, this thing's sit collecting dust in my basement right now because I think this is gonna get discontinued. I don't think it's gonna last. Those two sticks are not very good, but bring in the big gun, the LX Pro, my number one rated stick, still has yet to be dethroned because it does everything well. Release, lightness, blade feel, shot power. It is an amazing stick. And that thing, every time somebody tells me they pick one up, they DM me right away and say, this has changed their game. You cannot argue the LX Pro being the number one stick on the market right now so warrior is a winner only because of that stick ignore the novium ignore the qr5 pro all right so here is my asv pro So, the, I'm going to rank this higher than the Pro and higher than the Warrior. So, okay. All right, so do some wristers with the Geo here. It is a 70 Flex, which is different than the 75s of the other ones here. <laughs> Wrist shots are nice. <laughs> Okay, so I think the Nexus continues to be a uh, best balance of pretty much all types of shooters. And there's a reason why Nexus has always been one of my favorites, but I'm still going to rank it. I think I'm going to rank it um, above the Pro, but below the ASV. All right, so I also wanted to mention that this is the Pro Redline, which I believe is a low kick stick. Yeah. So, 
See how that goes for slappers. Consistent on accuracy, this has a lot of power for a, lo a low kick on slappers. I think there's a lot of value in these, the way it feels. So um, I'm going to rank it a little bit lower than the Pro here, or the uh, this one. So I'm going to rank it in between the Warrior and this one. So because I'm more of a mid kick guy, that's a personal preference thing though. All right, let's give the Hyper Tight Light 2 a rip. Okay, I didn't feel as much power on the releases as I did maybe some of the other ones. Okay, so good all-arounder. Um, I think I'm going to put this in between the two pros. Yeah, I feel like I was just a little bit more accurate with the mid-kick pro. Tiny little caveat on the sink as we get into Bauer as the next loser. And the reason that the Geo, although it generally performs okay, as Chris kind of showed, is that the five sides are so divisive and you either love it or hate it. If you've seen my sync video, you know, that was my biggest issue with it is that like sometimes I was good with it and then it rotated in my hands and then it wasn't. And me and Chris discussed afterwards that unfortunately the geo and sync uh, really kind of by having that five sides, you know, divided the Bauer fans. And you don't really see them that often because of that reason. Bring back a regular uh, sync uh, or something, you know, sync point two with regular sides, and I think they'll do better. Okay, I did want to piggyback off what Justin's saying about the five sides on the Nexus sticks. So in my area, um, we have the Seattle Kraken is our pro team, and I play in their practice rank. That's kind of where I play them on all my games, and the vast majority of the players on my team are buying uh, leftover pro stock sticks, and they happen to have a whole bunch of Bauer Nexus sync sticks in there. Um, I'm also uh, familiar with uh, the equipment staff and all that stuff and kind of get an idea of seeing what they're using for sticks. And of course they're using a, a variety of different sticks, but the Bauer Nexus Sync and the Bauer Nexus Geo sticks that they have, um, they're all four-sided shafts. Nobody is using the five-sided shafts on any of their sticks. Um, I would e I've even seen some CCM ASV Pros that are traditional four-sided shafts. They don't have the trapezoid dimension uh, like the you know, retail model. So I just figured that I'd kind of tag on and say, yeah, no one seems to really uh, like the five sides too much on the Nexus stick, um, including the pro guys. So what you're seeing is I'm guessing, and I don't know this for sure, but I'm guessing we're seeing repaints of the Nexus 2N Pro, possibly some 1Ns, in there as well so uh anyways just figured i'd throw that out there all right here comes the first real loser and it's one of the big manufacturers i'm sorry swiggy g whatever the hell your name is i'm sorry the hyper light 2 is not it the sync is not it the ultrasonic has not been it forever there's a reason it was discontinued bauer is missing the mark and is one of the losers in the stick wars in my opinion the agent is the only stick that competes in terms of top and power, release, and weight. This is a limited release stick. It also has some slight durability issues depending on how you play, so it's not ideal for most beer leaguers. 
Bauer has been losing the stick game for quite some time. In my personal opinion, they do not have a stick that is worth pursuing for a number of reasons. The first one is the agent. I love the agent, but it is not for everybody. It is a niche 1% market. So is this stick mainstream for any beer leaguer? Of course not. The Hyperlite 2, durability issues. Watch my video on that. It lacks shot power. It is part of Bauer's issues. The sink has five sides. Uh, every person I talk to hates the five sides. I rarely see anybody using it. The Geo, it's had that for too long. They need a new Nexus stick. Bring back the 1N, 2N lineage. Those sticks freaking rocked. Bring back a new 2N style without the five sides and drop the weight a little bit to 380. Thing's going to rock. Bauer, you're the loser of the stick world right now. Full on loser. There is no reason to go to Bauer. Unfortunately, despite me liking the agent, generally speaking, it's not worth it. Agent, yeah. All right, so we got the agent here for slappers. At times it felt good, other times it felt, um, I thought I stuck the release on a couple of those and it just didn't look like it, so not sure what that was about, but it's how it felt. Okay, so I could tell this is like a curve thing for me. When I'm hitting it off the toe like that, that's why I was cooking. The other times I was kind of closer to the heel. So it's definitely got the power in there for slappers if you want them. Um, but the consistency throws me off a little. So I'm going to put it right there. So. so tied for the loser right now with Bauer. Can anybody guess? It is true. And again, just like Bauer, their stick lines are just not there right now. It might change with the 9X3, which could be a dark horse. I'm really looking forward to testing that stick. But the Catalyst 9X is one of the worst sticks I've ever used for durability, shot power, everything like that. The Catalyst PX was just the weirdest feeling blade I've ever seen. It's like they just took a piece of wood, threw it on a stick, dropped the weight, and were like, there you go. Weird ass stick. I have an old review. Don't even watch it because it's terrible. But that stick isn't doing it. And of course, the Hazardous. I crapped all over the Hazardous, and I've got a few DMs of butthurt fans about the Hazardous. But the Hazardous was a stick that just had so many things wrong with it that it's just a loser in my book. And what do I mean by that? It didn't have any grip. The weight was not as advertised. It had durability issues. You could tape it, and the laminate was coming off the carbon on the stick itself. You could see paint running down where there was supposed to be grip, maybe. I, I don't really know. It lacked shot power on snapshots and... Uh, slap shots. It could only wrister decently. There was just no positives to that stick. So tr anybody, I don't even see people using true sticks because I think they figured it out. And actually anybody who gets a P P or hazardous texts me all the time, DMs and goes, yeah, you're right. I, I should have listened to you. So do not use true sticks. Stay away from them. Let's review the 9X3. Might be a new gem. Who knows? True's uh, kind of, you know, itching for some success. We'll see what happens. But Bauer, true. Losers, they're tied. The new winner and just like dark horse at a left field last year, and I predicted it when I did my TMP forecast. I was like, this stick looks beauty. I can't wait to use it. Check out my TMP review. Both the Wrecker and the TMP Pro are dark horse sleeper sticks that outperform all the Bowers, all the Trues, and they just brought it. Sherwood is an underdog and people are noticing. I posted my TMP Pro video before anybody else and talked about how great that stick was. I had DMs from players, beer leaguers, everybody saying that stick was just dynamite. And then all of a sudden, everybody started dropping the TMP Pro videos and they're like, this stick is great. And I was like, yeah, you're a bit late to the party. Beer League Bums got that. So big dark horse sleeper, Sherwood, winner sticks in my book. 
The Wrecker, everybody loves that stick for low kick. It outperforms most sticks that are low kick other than the trigger. And of course, you bring in the big gun, the TMP Pro. That thing for the cost, $100 less, absolutely annihilates. I love every shot with that stick. It is unreal. Sherwood, nice job. I cannot wait to test the new Wrecker. I've seen leaks of it, actually. All right, so we got the FT5 Pro. Hmm. You know, honestly, in this one, uh, I've been shooting enough with your curve lately that I'm starting to get comfortable with it, but it's a kick point for me. It's like, not quite flexing where I want it to, at least for those kinds of shots. Okay, yeah, that's definitely uh, a lot better for that kind of shot as well as maybe one-timers and things like that. So, but having used it recently for my own game, I'm actually gonna rate it lower than the Pro. Not from a power standpoint, but from an accuracy standpoint in control. So, it wins on power for sure. Okay, FT6 Pro. Okay, you know, um, feels very much like an FT5 Pro, but lighter, definitely lighter. Um, I think I'd put this above the FT5 Pro by just a smidge because of the power and control over it, but very, very minimal subtle difference. So in my opinion, from tax down to the Novium, that's my, that's my pick based upon my terrible game. What I will say, I wish the Novium had more than one shot associated with it. That's, that slap shot felt really good. Okay, so as you can see, I ran through all the sticks. This was a lot of fun, very educational, but uh, I ended up choosing the ASV Pro. I'm obviously a little biased because I do like that one a lot, but I think the, the Pro here, the mid kicker really held its own surprisingly this is worth a lot of value to this stick so i guess i wouldn't even hesitate on using this myself too so a lot of good information but that's a wrap man i think we got it all tucked and taken care of see you next time me and chris both agree that the pro is the winner in terms of the budget stick market because they build sticks that actually compete with the top end and the mid kicker is way up there the low kick me and him both kind of agree uh, not quite as good, but at the price point, you just, you can't really argue. So at the end of the day, the pros are in there. They're solid. That's where I recommend if you are not a retail stick $400 guy, pro is the way to go. And Chris agrees. So at the end of the day, who's the true winner of the stick wars? We've seen the losers. We've seen the winners tonight. I appreciate Chris running through all the sticks that we had. That was a lot of fun. Now, those are just, of course, you know, random sticks that we had and we wanted to kind of rank them while we were talking about the different stick uh, tiers and who was winning and losing. So who's really winning stick for us? At the end of the day, it is CCM. The ASV Pro currently is, of course, the best mid-kick stick. The Trigger 7 Pro, which will be replaced by the Trigger 8 here. Basically, it already is, but not everybody has access to it just yet. We'll test that soon. And, of course, the FT5, FT6 is one of the best sticks on the market, as you know from my FT6 Pro review, and Chris would agree. So we both agree that CCM is winning the stick wars, and it's unfortunate that Bauer, who used to be kind of the top stick maker, has fallen so far. They have a long way to go to get back. You also have True, who's just a dumpster fire, and of course with the update on the Catalyst 9X3 just being an absolute garbage stick, uh, the hazardous line continues to be garbage as well. True has fallen off. I wouldn't recommend True to anybody. You're going to break those sticks instantly. 
And of course, Warrior the LX Pro being the top stick in my tier list uh, makes them winners. We'll see what happens with the LX2. And then of course, Pro, as I just mentioned, is excellent, the best budget stick out there, which actually has performance. Well done, Pro, continue to do that. We actually have another stick review coming out that talks a little bit more just about Pro in general. And of course, we've got the uh, budgets out there that are losers. Um, I will throw one caveat in there for those who are looking for kind of the next budget stick as well, and that's Hockey Stick Man. Um, I've ordered from Hockey Stick Man two or three times, and all three times uh, I actually ended up with triggers for some reason when I was looking for AS3s and FT6s or 5s and things like that. So Hockey Stick Man is another great place to get a top end stick if you're looking in a budget. The problem is you don't really know what you're getting exactly because they are repaints. So thanks for watching guys. I know this was long. We just thought we would do it for fun. Uh, stay tuned for more stick videos. Thanks Chris from Guitar Slinger Hockey. Check out his channel. He is a very technical guy. I love his big reviews on technical aspects of things and sticks, etc. So thanks again, Chris. See you again soon.